everyone. Um, I'm Nicole and this is Amber and we're Plantastic Cooking and Gardening. Um, Amber's going to just uh, tell you why we're out here in the garden today. Yeah, so we're really excited to uh, be cooking in the garden. It is something that we are really excited to do more. Uh, my mom has spent so much time on this garden. It is beautiful. This gives us an opportunity to enjoy it in a new way. Uh, but more importantly, I think it's uh, it helps our creativity as we're thinking about how to use our plants in a way that helps us get uh, the most nutrition out of them, the most benefits out of them. Uh, so when we're cooking, we might, you know, get some creativity because we have all these plants, all these edible things around us that we can use. So it just gives us a chance to really think through how to use our plants really intentionally and make really great recipes for us and for you all as well. Yes, and I hope that uh, maybe you get some tips too of things that um, you can do, you know, with all the vegetables. We're trying to use the more common vegetables that people grow, that we grow. You know, the things you eat that you most pick up at the grocery stores. Uh, so it's, it's um, we were talking in the kitchen earlier about how we think food in this country and eating has been overly complicated mm -hmm. with ingredients and um, we don't really know what food is anymore. One of my favorite ways to cook is just to, you know, whatever vegetables are left or other things that are left in my pantry, in my fridge, just kind of throwing them together. Uh, so that's a lot of the ways that we do cook is just putting those like natural whole ingredients together and they taste delicious just as they are, especially as you eat them more and more. Yes, as, when you first start eating plants, if you eat more processed foods, you eat out a lot, um, they are heavily fatted, salted. Um, whereas when you're eating at home, you realize all that to get them to taste like the restaurants, how much butter and salt you would actually need to put in to get them to taste that way. So the more you eat at home, the less you put in it as far as salts and butters, the, um, the more you're going to taste the bitterness of your vegetables, but you start to appreciate that mm -hmm. as your taste buds get used to it and you can pick out the different vegetables and instead of it just being bitter you're going to start really enjoying those flavors so it's just it's just the way you train your taste buds so anyway we'll get into the recipe you oh. did come at salt a little bit i did i do love salt I a did. lot <laughs> just kidding oh it's my advice too is salt and actually i was going to laugh and say that this particular recipe we're doing today does you can either do it with salt or you can do it the way I usually do it is you can sweat them in the microwave with a paper towel. Um, but today I'm using salt because most people do it. And for this particular recipe, salt's going to add and bring out those flavors. So um, we're making a ratatouille bruschetta kind of, what do you call that? Fusion kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so because these are common grown vegetables um, in our garden. Um, so as, you, yeah. You use the term uh, sweating. What does that mean? Oh, sweating. Okay, so some vegetables like eggplant, um, some of your squashes, your tomatoes will have a lot of liquid in them. So you want to sweat out that liquid. So bruschetta, you want that to be crispy toast with just the vegetables on top. And another way you can do it is put the bruschetta on just before you put it in your mouth. Don't, you don't need to lop it, it on. Put it in a beautiful bowl. If you put it out for a party or mm -hmm. just even for your own lunch or dinner, put it next to it and then put your toasts on the side so that they don't get soggy. I find that that's the best. And then you can drizzle the olive oil just on the vegetables or on top of it as you go. We are very sensitive to soggy bread. I yes. don't know if everyone is like that, but it is something we think about. We have strategies around and not we are having soggy bread. Really immature about it too. At the <laughs> beach, I would not eat a peanut butter and jelly because it got wet. And Ray is sitting there happily eating my other half, and me and Danielle are sitting there going gagging <laughs> like little children so we do not like so we're very embarrassing 
<laughs> about that. So we do not like soggy bread. So we'll do everything we can to avoid it. So sweating your vegetables. We did it the common way. And we're going to show you as we go through how um, we do have a few flies out here. And we're sorry about that. Um, but basically, um, we'll, we'll show you why it's sitting in a strainer right now. Because we sweat it out the traditional way with the salt. Okay, so I guess we'll get started and on the recipe. Okay, so first what we did was we cut up all the vegetables. So commonly grown in the garden are squash, um, eggplant. You have your tomatoes. Right now we don't have large tomatoes because we're only in June. So we don't have your traditional tomatoes. And try to get away from the fact that, oh, you have to use a, you know, a Roma tomato for this or a beef steak for that or, you know, you can use any kind of tomato for this recipe. Mm -hmm. um, if, if it's one that's not real sweet, just when you're sweating it, add a pinch of sugar to it. Mm. And that helps it a lot as it's sweating mm. to kind of absorb some, a little bit more of the sugars. Um, if you're sensitive to a less sweet tomato, we're not, we'll eat them anyway. <laughs> we just love tomatoes. I don't, oh, she put up a short of our grand, my grandson, her, mm -hmm. her son. Um, do it. He loves to make cherry tomatoes too. So we're passing Hello, on the tradition. Mary. So Hello, these were, um, I, 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 I took all of my, off my little um, cherry bush because it's been producing since before May, before I planted it in the actual garden here, it's been producing probably since I would say end of April. Nice. So now it's kind of getting tired. It's looking a little like it's getting a little bit of a disease. Um, so I got all the, the tomatoes off. Um, these are not the sweet 100s, even though they look like they are. Um, they have not come in yet. And if you saw my video walk about the other day on my birthday, um, you'll see they're still green. I can't wait till they come out because they are sweet and they're wonderful. But so I just picked the last of the cherry tomatoes and that's what I put in here. So we just chopped them up in small chunks and we'll show you um, as we go. We did, we did um, eggplant. Uh, the cherry tomatoes and zucchini in this bowl. Also, speaking of harvesting your cherry tomatoes, if anyone has tips on how to prevent your children from eating them immediately so you can <laughs> cook them or eat with them or do anything other than your children just eating them right away, please let me know. <laughs> uh, I'm looking for that advice my life <laughs> and I have a tip for you for that is a tool <laughs> it's the same as the birds <laughs> it's a cheap way if you have some tool up in your sewing room that's mo uh, it doesn't matter what color wrap it around it and put one of those staples clips or on on it and it's a no-go zone because cat birds completely ate every blueberry on oh, my blueberry yeah. bush oh, yeah. and she was working on this one this morning so unfortunately our blueberry harvest because I didn't put the tool okay. around it yeah so I would assume that the same things that work for birds might work for children because I would like to make this bruschetta yeah for my yeah. cherry tomato yes <laughs> plants however at this point I will not be able to eat any of them yeah <laughs> exactly now what we're gonna do is oh and amber what how, about how much uh onion are we gonna use uh we cut up uh about two tablespoons of onion so we're gonna kind of see how it goes to get the flavor uh that we want we don't want it to overpower our other vegetables so we have two tablespoons ready to go we might not use all of it we're just gonna see how we feel as we go and then um i think that uh, what, two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. Um, and then we just have olive oil spray. It's just very convenient if you can get these or you just buy the olive oil spray. I find it easier to use the sprays. Yeah. Um, trying to drizzle it. I see them drizzle so pretty. Yeah. Mine's a hot mess. I can't drizzle. No, it's, no. it's like <laughs> huddling, like a storm happened on some pieces and the other pieces didn't get any rain. So it's just a really bad. And as she showed you, we did sweat it with kosher salt, which is your granular, big granulars um, of salt. I think it's easier to control either sea salt mm -hmm. or kosher salt. Yeah. 
uh, because when you you just can't see how much if you use a regular salt shaker and that fine salt has way more sodium than your bigger crystals um, in it per like teaspoon mm -hmm. that's why if you see a teaspoon of kosher or sea salt don't put a teaspoon of regular table salt because that's very fine and it's mm -hmm. very condensed um, into your recipes okay so we're going to take this in and we're going to flash it in the pan uh, we like um, we like our vegetables not too overcooked mm -hmm. um, we're going to cook this a little bit and that's just for those who worry about there is a chemical that some of your nightshades can put out um, but it's very unlikely you could eat it in enough quantity that that chemical would bother you. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of talk on the internet about lectins and about all these mm -hmm. things in your foods. Well, they're in everything. They're in everything. Every plant has a defense. Every animal has a defense. And you'll be surprised that some animals create some toxins mm -hmm. and stuff. Eggs, eggs create a chemical um, that blocks iron absorption. So even though an egg has a lot of iron in it, it blocks iron absorption. So everything has its defense against, you know, being eaten. People attacking it. <laughs> yes. So, but this is the, the, you know, this is what we feel for ourselves mm -hmm. is a healthy lifestyle is being very plant centric in our lives and just trying to add as much vegetable as we can. So we're just going to flash these in a pan. We're going to get that pan really hot and then we're going to, uh, just well we're going to put the onion and the garlic probably well no we'll probably use all that garlic you can do less garlic this is three cloves for this amount of vegetable you can do less but i don't know we could do less too but we'll see no 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 we're gonna do it all and um so and then we're gonna put the onion and the in for a minute and first we'll get that aromatic and aromatic means once you start smelling it takes about a minute sometimes two minutes and once you start smelling it in the air you're ready then put, we're going to put the vegetables in and we're just going to flash them in a pan a couple minutes maybe two or three minutes just to kind of um bring out their flavors a bit you know what i mean and um Got that garlic and onion in there too in, yes infused mm -hmm. right infuse yep. the flavors through it and then we'll show you how we make up the toast. So we're cutting herbs for our bruschetta. Uh, and what is really great that uh, Nicole has is these scissors that are just for the kitchen. They're exclusively for cutting, uh, so we can cut our herbs as we need them, but then also when we're cutting them into smaller pieces to cook with, we have these. It makes it so much easier than using a knife. I really wanna get one for my own kitchen because cutting herbs is one of my least favorite things, and this will make it so much easier. It's life-changing. <laughs> <laughs> basil <laughs> okay so in something like this I would I would if I was eating this alone I would eat all these herbs but I would say start small if you're new to herbs um, because they can get strong fresh is always less strong than dry um, so if you're using dry you want to use half of what you would use fresh that's really a good rule of thumb we in this family are used to a lot of herbs so I would say at least start with three and watch how fast you can get these done. And things like basil that are really wet, they are annoying to cut. They start getting soupy on you. I eat herbs as salad a lot, so I'm used to a lot of herbs.
right, so now the next step is to cut our uh, baguette. So we have a French baguette, which is uh, one of the best uh, breads in our opinion for bruschetta because again, it's a little bit harder, a little less, <laughs> <laughs> a little less challenging to get soggy. Back to that theme of we will avoid soggy bread at all costs. <laughs> Uh, so we're just going to cut it into uh, slices, pretty thin slices, maybe about like a quarter inch about. Yeah, yeah, I would say it's a quarter inch, like yeah. A... We'll, we'll get up close so you can kind of see what we're doing. Oh yes, this little table is moving, so you're going to have to kind of bear with us. We'll just show you a few, a few pieces and then we'll speed things up so you're not seeing a wonky video. <laughs> So that's about it. You just want to do them pretty thin. Everybody's had it at a restaurant. Regular bruschetta pieces. Oh, and it's nice. You know, it has the nooks and crannies, which is going to grab that, um, those vegetables too. Okay, Amber, what have we learned from this bread cutting lesson? Don't cut bread. Leave. Get someone else to cut your bread for you. The <laughs> crust is hard to cut. Yes. And annoying. My wrist hurts. But we're taking one for the team. It will be delicious. Yes. And now we're going to put it but on our pan. Look what a beautiful job she did. <laughs> it will be worth it. It will be worth it. When we have delicious bruschetta to eat for lunch. They look so cute. That's, they're cute because they have that hard crust. Now that we have our very hard to cut bread uh, <laughs> on our baking sheet, we are going to thinly coat it with oil. So like we said earlier, we're going to use the spray. It's a lot easier. I am not somebody who can drizzle very nicely. I wish I could because I could make some beautiful um, drizzles on my baked goods, which I like to do, but we're going to stick with the spray for this. So we're we don't have the drizzle gene no. in our family. <laughs> Maybe we'll practice. Like, yes, maybe. Drizzle Olympics. Yes. Um, so we're going to lightly coat. And this is bread. extra virgin olive oil. Um, and then we are going to take our garlic. For garlic, you need to release uh, the flavor. So we are going to rub our garlic onto our bread, but first we are going to make sure that we uh, break it open. Cause so you can kind of see this one's been already smashed a little bit. Um, so it's going to release the garlic flavor, um, but you can use a spoon or a knife um, and put it on top and then just hit it with your palm. I broke it in half. That's okay. Um, I broke it in half, so I'm going to <laughs> just kind of make sure I smashed it a little bit. So I have a little bit more garlic coming out and then rub it on each piece of our bread. This is an extra step, but it does give your bread um, a little extra flavor. And if you grow garlic like I do, you put it in in the fall, it's now coming to um, ready for harvest um, at the beginning of July usually. And um, so you're probably gonna have a lot of it. <laughs> so this is a great way to use it. And garlic is really good for you. It's a, a lot easier when you don't hulk it and you have a full <laughs> garlic clove to work with versus the one I demonstrated with. We really loved garlic too, as we said earlier. No garlic is too much garlic for us. So we're pretty sure we're not vampires, even though we are night people because we are not offended by garlic. <laughs> We have our tray of uh, ba sliced baguette with our oil and our garlic, and we are going to put it in the oven 
at 400 degrees Fahrenheit and yeah. bake it for about 10 minutes until it's golden brown and ready for our topping, which I am super excited about. It smells delicious and I am ready to eat it already. All right, we, our baguettes are finished and we are going to add our balsamic vinegar, vinegar into our vegetables and herbs. And that was two tablespoons. And then like we said before, we're putting it in this uh, separate bowl so we can add it onto our baguettes when we are ready to eat it so that it does not get soggy. The theme of this video, no soggy bread. <laughs> and then it's ready. We are going to attempt live today a drizzle. I see that you chose to be behind the camera <laughs> yes. for this portion. You are younger mm. and your hands are steadier. Ooh. You just drizzle that across. Well, hopefully Look at this. we are not going to be- We're gonna do it in slow-mo. Okay. All right, I'm very nervous. Gonna need a lot of moral support for this drizzle. <laughs> I panicked, I panicked. Okay, it's going, <laughs> It's going well, it's it was beautiful better drizzle. Better than I expected uh, for, for the drizzle. Okay. Good job. And look who shows up just in time for lunch <laughs> yeah. on his lunch break from work. Perfect timing. <laughs> <laughs> Cooking in the garden. Am I gonna burn? All right. This one's been on my face, but not my. Like... Yeah, I have it on my face only. Mm -hmm. Are we going for it? We are going for it. Okay. All right. So we've gotten it done. We've added our balsamic. And now we have our taste tester here who showed up just in time. <laughs> Very good. Mm -hmm. We don't have to worry about soggy bread because it's very crunchy. So we might have overcooked the bread a bit, but um, we won't have mm. to worry about that even with the olive oil. And it's pretty delicious. It's so good. Very flavorful and fresh. Nice vinegar taste. It's perfect. Very good. Great job with the recipe. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, this is how you can use up all your zucchini, tomatoes, um, eggplants, and you can just turn this into a ratatouille by making one inch, the same recipe, one inch cuts, just larger chunks, um, adding some you know, crush some of your tomatoes, your extra tomatoes, put some crushed tomatoes in and some white wine and you have a ratatouille and you can put that on rice, um, on, on bread, uh, couscous, lentils, you know, any kind of grain you want to put it on and you can just spoon it on and you'll have a bigger, um, ratatouille out of this exact recipe, just with bigger cuts and changing the balsamic into white wine. All right. Versatile. Yeah. So thanks for joining us here in the garden. We're sorry we're eating in front of you, but it's kind of delicious <laughs> and we're starving. Uh, we've been working on this video all morning. Um, so yeah. So yep. Thank you all for watching and hopefully you enjoy this bruschetta. <laughs> Very good. Have a great day. <laughs>